Spiritually speaking, we can continue exploring the life of the Prophet ﷺ from multiple dimensions. <clears throat> One will never cease. We can explore his life from multiple dimensions and everything of his life is unique. But the question I ask my brother and on that note I want to leave you. If we don't translate this love into action and we don't take it a stage forward, then I'm afraid we have missed the train and we've lost the essence. If you've read the advisors of Imam Ghazali, which I know people have, with regards to his distinguished student, in which he devoted 24 advisors to him. After years in his company, he wrote back to his teacher and he said, please advise me. And one of the advisors, he said there, he said, وَإِنْ كَانَ قَصْتُكَ فِيهِ إِحْيَاءَ شَرِيعَةِ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم وتهذيب أخلاقك وكسر النفس الأمارة بالسوء فطوبى لك ثم توبى لك ولقد صدق من قال شعرا ولقد صدق من قال شعرا سهر, سهر العيون لغير وجهك ضائع وبكاؤهن لغير فقدك باطل I wish you could comprehend this in Arabic, your heart would have burst. He wrote back to his student and he said, listen, you've devoted nights and years in worship, in researching. I want to ask you, what was the motive of you doing that? I ask you, my brother, you have traveled, I have traveled from the continent of Africa. You've traveled from different parts of the UK to come here. I really want to ask you, what is your object? Then he asked his servant, in kana nayla ardi dunya. If you have done what you've done and if you've come here tonight simply because to devote one night or so that you can say I have studied more and I know more than you or to prove your excellence over others in your eloquence then woe be to you oh my student not once but not twice but repeated وَإِنْ كَانَ قَصْتُكَ فِيهِ إِحْيَاءَ شَرِيعَةِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. But if your intention was to revive the life of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وَتَهْذِيبَ أَخْلَاقِكِ And to crush this evil character of yours وَكَسْرَ النَّفْسِ الْأَمَّارَةِ بِالسُّوءِ To mold your character and crush your ego فَتُوبَى لَكَ ثُمَّ تُوبَى لَكَ then, oh my son, you have come to the right place and you have done the correct thing. Then blessed be you on every move and every utterance of yours. If we have come here, I want to conclude on true love of the Prophet ﷺ on action. Muhammad bin, you see, Sahaba loved. In Zad al-Ma'ad, al there is a narration, Umar ibn al-Khattab, on the occasion of the captives of Badr, when Abu Bakr and the Prophet ﷺ were crying. So Umar radiallahu came there and he said, Ya Rasulullah, أخبرني ما الذي أبكاك فإن وجدت بكيت وإن لم أجد تبكيت وبرفض والله just to see you crying is enough to make me cry tell me what makes you cry so that I can cry but if I cannot cry just to see your eyes moist is enough for me to pretend to cry also now imagine Omar shares in the grief of the Prophet on the reverse, you and I, by our actions, are the ones that cause the pain to the Prophet ﷺ. By our own actions, and I'm going to leave you on one note, I know my time is up and I'll wrap up. What did Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i rahimahumullah say? مَنْ نَالَ مِنِّي أَوْ عَلِقْتُ بِذِمَّتِهِ أَبْرَعْتُهُ لِلَّهِ شَاكِرًا مِنَّةً أَعْرَى مُعَوِّقَ مُؤْمِنٍ يَوْمَ الْجَزَاء أَوْ هَلْ أَسُوءُ مُحَمَّدًا فِي أُمَّتِهِ he said, anyone who has insulted me, offended me, or condemned me, or ridiculed me, I have forgiven him because of the multiple favors of Allah upon me. So I'm not looking at that man, I'm looking at Allah's kindness upon me. Then he goes on to say, I am not prepared to carry the burden on my shoulders. 
that I must be told this man's entry into Jannah is suspended because you haven't pardoned him. I don't want to be the obstacle of any man's entry into paradise. So if he doesn't go there, let it be for his wrong, but not because I haven't forgiven him. Or at its least, I know if I don't forgive him, I will hurt the heart of my prophet. And because of the potential harm and the potential hurt, I will create to the heart of my prophet by not pardoning anyone. I have given general pardon to all those who have insulted me and all those who will insult me till the day I die, just so that I cannot, con so I don't contribute to the pain of the Prophet <laughs> Now I ask you, Imam Shafi'i rahimahumullah said, in the spirit of love, I pardon all so I don't hurt his heart. What are you ready to do, my brother? And I will leave you on this hadith. I know I'm saying it, but I want to end. I want you to study your life and look into your life and see those actions which are clear in the hadith bring pain to the Prophet ﷺ. We know his face. I just shared this from the Shama'il. His face was radiant like the, the, the 14 full moon. Azhar alone, he was radiant in his complexion. Sahl al Khaddain here. You know, cheeks, thin cheeks, very beautiful cheeks. And Azajjal Hawajib, min ghayri qarnin. The Prophet Sallallahu eyelashes did not meet. It did not meet. Baynahuma irqun yudirruhu al-ghadab. There was a vein between his blessed eyelashes, which used to expand and protrude when he used to become angry. Aisha radiallahu said he walked into the house. فَتَلَوَّنَ وَجْهُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ His face became pale and the veins shot up. I realized I have done something wrong. I said, أَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ I repent to Allah. مَاذَا أَذْنَبْتُ What have I done? The Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ أَصْحَابَ هَذِهِ السُّوَرِ يُعَذَّبُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ You have these pictures of living creatures in your house that brings anger to me. And those who do this year, they will be punished on the day of Qiyamah. Now imagine, we have those that are ready to cry on the cry of the Prophet wasallam. And I'm afraid you enter some homes with these Barbie dolls. And this decoration and that decoration and this image and that image, which bars the entry of the angels and brings displeasure to the Prophet wasallam. Sahaba say we were sitting and we were chatting and we started speaking about taqdeer and the Prophet came out وَنَحْنُ نَتَنَازَعُ فِي الْقَدْرِ فَغَضِبَ حَتَّى حَمَرَّ وَجْهُ He became so angry, his eyes became red, his veins shot out. We said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, we apologize. He said, why are you trying to explore the sensitive signs of predestination? Others tried to explore it and they went astray. What did Sayyidina Amr ibn As say? Ma ghabattu nafsi bi majlisin takhallaftu an Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Generally, those who did, who did not attend the gathering of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam people would say you were deprived, you, you, you must out. But that day the Prophet sallallahu was so angry that those that were not present were the lucky ones. My point that I want to say is let it not be that we sing his praises yet commit those actions that hurt his heart. He walked into the masjid he walked into the masjid, I end on this note. He walked into the masjid and he seen saliva on the floor. And Ghadiba Hatta Marrawatu, he became angry. And he said, Inna Hadakum Ida Salla. When you perform your salah, you speak in with your Lord. Don't spit in the masjid. Let's look at our cell phones today and the musical tones. In fact, it happens right at the grave of the Prophet. You're standing in front of his masjid and he said, I have been told to destroy all the seductive, melodious music which does not conform with Islam. And your phone rings in a musical tone at his grave. Decide for yourself if you have truly loved him or you've defeated the essence. We may draw to the Almighty Allah that he instill within us the true love of the Prophet May he make us ambassadors of this beautiful deen so that we can contribute to the broader world from the noble life of the Prophet and we can become exemplary humans for others. <laughs>